गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टू बेसिक ग्राफ एल्गोरिथम्स फर्स्ट लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ क्यू सो दिस रिप्रेजेंट्स अ क्यू वेयर यू कैन सी दैट एस इज दैड एंड जे इज द टेल इट्स साइज इज फाइव बिकॉज देर फाइव पॉक्स इज देयर इट हैज थ्री ऑपरेशन फर्स्ट इज इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एड समथिंग टू द क्यू सो if you want to add something it should be added through tail if you want to delete something or remove then it should be removed from the head and then if the queue is empty then you return true it means the job is done otherwise you return false it would be more clear once we see the graph algorithms and how the queue has been used so graph traversals are the techniques to visit all nodes in the graph and they are the basis for several efficient graph algorithms we are going to see two of them the first one is bfs breadth first search to understand how this algorithm works let us consider that we need to find a spanning tree of this given graph starting with s which is the vertex 1 now initially the queue is empty <coughs> and then since we are going to start with one so therefore i have added the vertex 1 to the queue now i am going to explore all of the neighbors of vertex 1 one, one by one so now 6 is the neighbor so i add 6 to the queue then the next neighbor is 8 i add 8 then next is 5 i add 5 and then i add 9 so all the neighbors of the one has been visited and they have been added to the queue since the neighbors of one has already been visited so we have deleted one from the queue and now we will move to the 6 the next one and explore its neighbors which are not the part of the queue so one has already been added to the queue therefore from 6 we want to go to 1 but we will visit the other neighbors which are not in the queue so for example 2 and 7 are not in the queue so from 6 we'll go to 2 and 7 now next is 8 so you can see that 8 has neighbor 4 so we go to 4 now 5 for 5 all the neighbors have already been visited it's 4 2 6 1 so 4 2 6 1 and 1 were already there in the queue and therefore we'll move to the next one which is 9 9 again all the neighbors have been visited we'll go to 2 <coughs> then we go to 7 for 7 <coughs> 3 has not been visited so we'll add 3 to the queue and now for 4 and 3 all the neighbors have been visited this is how we have used the algorithm bfs to have the required spanning tree since we have the concept of the queue we already know the vertices which has already been visited and since we are not visiting them again therefore it guarantees that it does not form a cycle and all the vertices would be visited so we'll have the required spanning tree so we have already discussed the algorithm you can quickly read it it is start with node s which we put into the queue and mark as disk covered then it takes the next node and visit all the neighbors uv belongs to the edge set it means it visit all the neighbors keep marking it and keep moving it let's quickly try one more question so now this is a directed graph we start with s so from s i can go to 2 3 and 5 so from 2 so i have added 2 to the queue then 3 then 5 now i should go to 
so from 2 I can go to 4 because 5 has already been visited so I go to 4 5 already discovered then after 2 it's 3 so from 3 I can go to 6 now 5 from 5 its only neighbor is 6 which has already been covered and therefore I will move to 4 from 4 I can go to 8 then I go to 6 from 6 I can go to 7 and 9 so 7 and 9 would be added to the queue so 6 has been visited after that 7 all the neighbors have already been covered and 9 all the neighbors have already been covered so this is how I would have the required spanning tree so you can see that also we have mentioned the levels which means that we started with 0 level then in the next step we visited these 3 vertices then in the next step these 2 vertices and then in the last step these 3 vertices have been visited So this is how the BFS work. From 1 I go to all the neighbors 2, 3, two, three 4. From 2 I go to neighbors 5, 6. Then the neighbors of 5 are 9, 10. Before that the neighbors of 4 are 7, 8. Then 9, 10. Then neighbors of 7 are 11, 12. But there could be one more approach which says that from 1 I go into the deep until exhausted. So from 1 I go to the its neighbor 2, then 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4. Now 4 does not have any neighbor so I go back to 3 then find its neighbor which is 5. 5 does not have any neighbor so from 3 I go back to 2 find its neighbor 6 then 7 then 8, 9, 10 again then 9 neighbor 11 and 8 neighbor is 12. This is known as the DFS. It would be more clear once we do an example but you can see the difference between the two approaches BFS and DFS in BFS we visit all the neighbors of a vertex and then move to the next vertex in DFS we only visit one neighbor then switch the vertex find its neighbor and keep going on like this so DFS let's use DFS to find a spanning tree of the following graph so I start with vertex 1, from vertex 1 I find its neighbor 5, so I move to 5, from 5 I go to neighbor of 5 which is 2, I could also have gone to 4 and therefore there are the multiple DFS or BFS can be there, from 2 I go to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to there are two choices again 8 or 9 I go to 8 now you can see that 8 all the neighbors have been, been exhausted so from 8 I should go back to 4 and look for its unexplored neighbor so 4 has an unexplored neighbor 9 and now all the neighbors or all the vertices have been visited so this gives us the required spanning tree which is marked in red so two very interesting algorithm now we'll quickly see one exercise which talks about the application of these algorithms so if we have to find the cut vertex in the graph then can we use dfs or bfs so there comes the question it says that consider a as a root and apply dfs please do try this exercise by yourself there could be multiple answers we just need one if you apply dfs then you can see that this is the one possible approach from a you move to b then b to c c to d then d to h h to g after reaching g there is no other option so you return back and come to c c has a neighbor f then there is no other option so from f you come back to c go to b a from a you go to e e to i i to j now very interesting observation so now based on this dfs can i say that 
A is a cut vertex or not, which has been considered as a root. You can observe that A has more than one child. So we say that if we run DFS in an arbitrary start node S, the root S of the DFS tree is an articulation point or cut vertex if and only if S has more than one child in the DFS. And it, it makes sense because from one, from A, you moved in one direction, you get exhausted and then you went in the exactly opposite direction. It means that there are two components. One is this one and the other one is this one. Also, you can observe here that E is a cut vertex. But if you see here E, it has only one child. But the result does not apply here because we haven't considered E as a root node. If you consider E as a root, then you will observe that and if you apply DFS after considering E as a root, you will see that it would have two child and again it is a cut vertex. So in the next class, we will see the next all algorithm which is shortest path algorithm. Before that one more interesting exercise is there which says that use DFS and BFS to produce all possible spanning trees starting from vertex A for the following graph. Please try it by yourself. If you try it, you will observe that for the BFS, the answer is unique. But for the DFS, it is not unique. So first let's try BFS. So from BFS, you go to A, you start with A, explode all its neighbors B and C. Then from C, there is only one choice D. D, there are two choices. So you go to E and F, the neighbors. Now, either you go to E or you go to F doesn't matter. Because from E, there is only one choice to go to H. And from S also, from F also, there is only one choice. And this is how you will observe that there is only one BFS tree. But in case of the DFS, for example, I have showed you one of the following where from A you go to B and B to C. But you could also have done that from A to C and C to D. Then from D again, there are two choices. You could have gone to E or you could have gone to F. And based on all these things, you can see that there are many more DFS trees for this given example. Please try to draw all of them. The last question which says that provide an algorithm using DFS to find a cycle of length 3 in an undirected simple graph G or produce a counter example. So first think that how DFS can be used to find a triangle in a simple graph G. The other thing is that does this technique works for all the graphs? Let me give you an example. If I consider this graph, then there is a triangle 4, 5, 6. If I apply DFS, there are multiple choices. From 1 you can go to 4 also. From 1 you can go to 2 also. One of the DFS trees as follows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Next observation is that when you have this tree, so 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. In this tree, 4 is the grandparent of 6. 5 is the parent, so 4 is the grandparent. And 4 and 6 are adjacent in the original graph. It means that there exists a triangle. So again, 6 is the grandchildren of 4 or 4 is the grandparent of 6 and 4 and 6 are adjacent in the original graph which identify a triangle in the original graph. Now think that does this approach always work? Let me produce a counter example now. Again in this case there is a triangle 147. If I choose DFS like this starting from 1 then 4 then 7 and then so on then you can see that 1 is the grandparent 
of 7 and 1 and 7 are adjacent which identifies the triangle. But if we choose the other DFS which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 then you can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 these vertices are grand parent of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 respectively. But at the same time none of them are adjacent. It means that this approach didn't manage to find a triangle within the given graph. So it means that this algorithm can only work for a particular DFS tree. The approach can work but to have this workable approach we should be able to identify the required DFS tree. For all DFS trees it does not work. Okay. So in the next class, we will talk about one more interesting algorithm. Thank you.